Airplanes. Why do they feel completely overpowered when somebody else is using them, but when you try them it seems they all die instantly? And then you look at some pro replays or gameplay footage and it's all... Why do you attack the ground every so often? Okay, obviously there's a need for a short tutorial where I explain things as simply as possible. I've actually already done a video on this, but it was, uh... An hour long? Alright, we can do better than that. So, fighters can only shoot forward and it also takes them a while to turn around. That is why ideally you want your fighter to be positioned here, and the enemy fighter to be positioned like this. Obviously you can't micro every single fighter individually when there's dozens of airplanes involved. So you only worry about two things. What happens before an air fight, and what happens during an air fight. In case you pause the video around 15 seconds to actually read the comment I made, I was talking about micro during an air fight. The way units in SC2 work is that when they're attacking, they pick a target and keep attacking it until it dies, goes out of range or you give that unit another order. This can cause a situation where the target managed to get behind your fighter who will then proceed to try and turn around and keep attacking the same target instead of picking a new target that could be right in front of him. This is why every few seconds you want to retarget your airplanes. They will all individually pick a new target that's in front of them instead of trying to dogfight the same fighter from start to finish. You can do this by either pressing A on your keyboard and left clicking the ground or holding ALT and right clicking the ground. Just make sure your airplanes are set to retaliate toggle instead of ground fire, because if you A-click or ALT-click with ground fire enabled, they will bomb the ground in the spot you clicked, which is by the way something you can use to hit submarines underwater. You also want to be careful about not doing it too much, because whenever you give your units a new order, there is a slight delay and if you keep spamming A-click or ALT-click, they will spend a lot of time not doing anything. I also recommend only selecting the middle part of the cluster when retargeting, because your units on the edges will only have one or two targets to choose from anyway. Now what I think is a lot more important is what happens before an air fight. The fastest way to lose all of your airplanes and potentially throw your entire team under the bus is trying to bomb when you and the enemy have an equal amount of fighters. When somebody tries bombing, their airplanes move in a very predictable way and guarantee that you will be able to hit them from the side mid-bombing run and begin the air fight with all of their airplanes completely out of position. Basically this scenario we talked about. If all the enemy airplanes are behind you when the air fight starts, you are going to lose. Airplanes deal high damage and have very low health, so by the time your fighters turn around and the air fight starts, half of your airplanes will already be dead. You also don't want to try bombing over heavy enemy anti-air, because that leaves you with two options. Either you begin the air fight over the anti-air and fight with a big disadvantage, or you try to fly out of range of the anti-air after bombing with all the enemy airplanes shooting you in the back as you're leaving. Obviously you have to judge how heavy the enemy anti-air is, if your teammates have anti-air nearby, the skill of the enemy air player and if however many extra fighters you might have are worth sacrificing to help the land units by bombing. That is something you build with experience and unfortunately not a topic I could fit in a short video about the basics. Now let's take a break from all this micro talk and have a look at some build orders and playstyles. I will be focusing on team games here. You always need at least one so-called air player on 95% of all maps. The air player should only focus on making fighters until his team has more fighters than the enemy, at which point he can switch to bombers, gunships or air experimentals. You never want to make anything other than fighters until you have more fighters than the enemy for reasons I explained in the AC-1000 video, so feel free to pause and give this 1 minute long segment about air control a quick watch. Link is in the description. As UEF, you get fighters that are cheaper and build faster, but can't bomb. Cybern and Aeon get fighter bombers. This difference is very small, but it means UEF will have a slight advantage over other factions, so you will need to keep your fighter bombers over some anti-air and only engage in air fights there. A good synergy is having one teammate do Horvox or Adapters with anti-air, allowing you to try sneaking in some bombing runs to help them out and fly back over the units before the UEF player can do too much damage. If he follows you into your anti-air, engage in the air fight and you will probably win. But whenever UEF is not involved, you always want to build two air factories, two generators, your mass, and that's it. No research stations, no anti-air towers, no factory add-ons unless they're needed. The more mass you waste on things that are not fighters, the more mass you'll be forced to waste later on more anti-air, which means you'll have even less fighters, which means you'll need to make even more anti-air. You get the idea. Keep auto-building fighters and whenever you reach 300 mass just add another air factory and one generator. After 4 or 5 air factories you can build your first research station. 
Any build order other than two air factories will usually lose on the spot or force your teammates to spend a lot of mass on anti-air, giving them less mass to use against their land opponent and make them very unhappy. But this is all assuming there is only one air player. If you have multiple air players on a team, which happens very often on maps like Tourneydome for example, you can have one player do the normal two air factories and some other players start with research air. I also recommend building your air factories in a square grid, so you can easily hide your ACU under 4 factory shields in the late game to avoid getting sniped. In team games, the minimum one air player you always need is usually going to be in the back. It is up to the front players to decide whether they want to make land or air units. Whenever you're on a map like Tourney Dome where it doesn't matter where the air player is and it's not clear who will do this task, don't forget to say so in chat in the first few seconds if you are doing air. If you're still deciding what you want to do and see that nobody else is going air, it might be a good idea for you to do it. Because not having at least one air player will lead to a very quick game as all of your mass extractors get bombed and you're forced to spend thousands of mass on anti-air with half the economy. If you are doing air and spawned next to a teammate going heavy research, it might not be a bad idea to start with your normal two air factories but build all future air factories in their base to defend it. But what do you actually do with your airplanes now that you have them? It is important to defend your land players from bombing runs, so keep your entire air force centered and close to the action. Double click one of your air factories to select all air factories on screen and right click to set a rally point. If you want to select all of your airplanes you can use Ctrl plus A, but be careful because this can mess up your scouts or transports, so I recommend avoiding this bad habit and selecting them normally or using control groups. Don't forget to use the first airplane that comes out of your factory to fly over enemy spawns and scout. That way, your team knows what build orders the enemy team is doing and you can react accordingly. You should only scout with one airplane, because wasting too many airplanes will put you at a disadvantage and force anti-air, making the disadvantage even worse. Every airplane counts. If the enemy team has the same amount of air factories, you don't have anything to worry about. Just keep your airplanes over your team's land army and feel free to bomb if the enemy airplanes are far away. If the enemy team has more air factories, your land players should help you out with some anti-air and start pushing. If the enemy team has less air factories, go look for targets outside of anti-air and try to harass the enemy air players first to establish complete air dominance. But be careful not to get into an air fight over enemy anti-air. You only want to engage enemy fighters if you know you have more of them. Even a couple extra fighters can decide the air fight and decide the game. Keeping track of enemy airplanes and good radar is very important. Make sure your airplanes aren't out of position, allowing the enemy to bomb and fly away before you can get there in time. You also need to consider travel time. If the thing being bombed are some bots deep inside enemy territory, trying to defend them that far in the enemy base will give the enemy air player a big advantage, as a lot of your airplanes are on the way to the fight across the entire map, so sometimes it's better to let them do some damage and die. You can make the best of this situation by bombing somewhere else while the enemy airplanes are distracted. I can also give you some tips for bombing. Hold control when giving orders to your airplanes so they group up instead of flying in formation and as soon as they drop their bombs you can give them a movement order to fly away and minimize the time you spend there, which can be very important if there's anti-air. If you're bombing small land units you can put your airplanes in control groups before bombing and then split up the bombs to deal the damage over a bigger area. It takes 4 airplanes to kill a radar in one pass, 8 for an engineer and around 81 planes for an ACU assuming neither side has upgrades or veterancy. Even after winning air control you don't want to bomb anti-air towers until you have at least 20 airplanes. You only want to get aggressive and start bombing after a big air fight has happened and you came out on top. Until then, you just keep track of enemy airplanes and mirror their movements. If you want to see all these things in action, I highly recommend watching this video I made. It's almost 30 minutes of me doing nothing but playing air in team games filled with the best SC2 players there are. I think this video combined with watching how some good air players do it is enough for now. Hopefully you've learned something today and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a nice day and good luck. Oh yeah, and uh, I have a Patreon now in case you have some disposable ink. <laughs> so yeah, thanks to all these people for supporting the channel. See ya. What? You still haven't joined the biggest Supreme Matter 2 Discord in the world with over 1,000? Uh, 2,000? You have general, hall of fame, all the YouTube channels, all the YouTube videos, streaming, uh, don't, don't worry about that. Ask for some help, post some memes, send some replays, find a game, dead chat. We even have a channel for all the Xbox Subcom 2 players. So what are you waiting for? Click the first link in the video description or just type Supreme Commander 2 in this thing that nobody will ever use. You should join now.